Let us discuss Neville Goddard's Feeling is the Secret. From Chapter 1, Law and its Operation Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling, nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself or others. To do so is to impress the subconscious with these limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Neville is teaching that feeling is everything. All day long we react to things. All day long we imagine various things, many things we wouldn't want to happen. Sometimes when we're upset at something on the outside, we might think of something not very nice of another. But all these things are forming all the experiences we have. So the one thing to control in life is the feeling. And we do this by understanding how this law operates. Neville says, Every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, must be expressed. Neville had said time to time, that even he never said he was a master of his mind. Sometimes you hear the news or gossip and you react. And this is why it's more important than ever to make time to imagine what you do want and to persist so you can get better and what once felt like a shadow or uncomfortable where it feels as real as reality and becomes your reality. Neville says, Be careful of your moods and feelings for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of disease. Disease in both body and environment. Do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure toward frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. Neville is telling you how important the mood is. So start to become more aware of the moods passing through because those moods will show you your future attractions, your future experiences in life. And one way to see the effect of these moods is your own body. How is your health? To think here that Neville's saying when you feel wronged and not to say anything, it's going to cause disease in the body, in the environment. But a lot of times, but when people start to understand these teachings, a lot of times people don't want to express these emotions and fears, especially if they're negative, they're afraid they'll outpicture. Yet also we're being told here not to suppress it though, because that energy also can be expressed as disease. So what is one to do? I do recall sometimes when Neville would say, if you must explode, let it get off your chest and then revise it. That would be understandable for intense emotions. Think freeingly only of the state you desire to realize. Feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is a way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. So to make the miracles in our life, we must feel what we want and persist, and that will lead to conviction, hand in hand with the understanding of how this law works and the repetition of study so you don't forget. And not only that, but as you go about testing this, you go through your trials and tribulations, as you learn to develop this imaginal muscle, when you come back to the teachings again, you come back more mature, the teachings go deeper, and the success has a space to be even more greater. And a final thing from this chapter. Neville says, Mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is your highest achievement. However, until perfect self-control is attained, so that in spite of appearances, you feel all that you want to feel, you sleep in prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states. So he is telling you that your main goal in life is to control your thoughts, your imagination, because that is controlling everything you're experiencing. But he understands that we experience things in this dream of life and we react. And when we react, we cannot control these things. And when we're caught in the loop of reacting, 
we lose control. So Neville is pointing that there's something that can help you to make it easier. Sleep as well as prayer. And this will come up in the next chapter we take a look at. And now we take a look at chapter 2, Sleep. Because all things come from within yourself, and your conception of yourself determines that which comes. You should always feel the wish fulfilled before you drop off to sleep. You never draw out of the deep of yourself that which you want. You always draw that which you are. And you are that which you want yourself to be as well as that which you feel as true of others. The time right before sleep is a time Neville taught was a most important time. This is when the conscious mind is too tired to fight. But when you're not too sleepy, you're still able to guide it. And when you can take this mood into sleep, into the land of the subconscious and beyond, this is where Neville's teaching is going to be easiest to manifest your miracles. Neville says the feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized, is the feeling which should monopolize and immobilize your attention as you relax into sleep. Remember this question. How would I feel were my wish realized? How would you feel if your wish was realized? That mood. Take that into sleep. Remember this question every night. It is one of the quickest and easiest ways to catch the feeling of the wish fulfilled. It's the magic question. And the natural feeling that comes when you ask this question is the magic feeling. Once asleep, man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. It follows, therefore, that he should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before he retires to sleep. Remember, Neville says, Whatever the mind of man can imagine, man can realize. If you can imagine it, you can realize it. So always imagine and expect the best. And if you don't always know what is the best, just choose what would feel really wonderful right now. Neville goes on to say, The world cannot change until you change your conception of it. As within, so without. Nations, as well as people, are only what you believe them to be. No matter what the problem is, no matter where it is, no matter whom it concerns, you have no one to change but yourself. And you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. You have nothing to do but convince yourself of the truth of that which you desire to see manifested. When we look at all the things going on in the world today, the possibility of even a big war, it's very easy to perpetuate it and to see it as something on the outside, out of our control. But if we're looking at what mystics like Neville are teaching us, as within, so without, no one to change but yourself, there's neither opponent nor helper. What do you really desire to see manifested? Can you convince yourself? And you must do it in imagination, especially in that sleepy state, and persistently. Are you hot enough for it? Do you want it? If not, suffering helps us become more hot. And finally in this chapter, Neville says, If as you prepare for sleep you do not consciously feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, then you will take with you into the chamber of her who conceived you the sum total of the reactions and feelings of the waking day. And while asleep, you will be instructed in the manner in which they will be expressed tomorrow. You will rise believing that you are a free agent, not realizing that every action and event of the day is predetermined by your concept of self as you fell asleep. Your only freedom, then, is your freedom of reaction. You are free to choose how you feel and react to the day's drama, but the drama, the actions, events, and circumstances of the day have already been determined. So Neville is telling you to become conscious, intentional, especially into sleep. Because if you don't, most likely, that's the same way you lived your day. Reacting to things you don't want to perpetuate, and thinking of things you wouldn't want to manifest either. It would be much easier to sleep in the mood of the wish fulfilled. So use your imagination consciously as you fall into sleep. Otherwise, all your unintentional imaginings including various things you wouldn't want to manifest, will be brought into your subconscious. 
and manifest it into your tomorrows. Neville closes with, Through your ability to think and feel, you have dominion over all creation. If it is so, as Neville teaches, that imagining creates reality, then the world, in a sense, is like your toy store. And we will cover one more chapter in this book, Chapter 3, Prayer. The undisciplined man finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses and usually accepts or rejects solely on appearances of the senses. Because of this tendency to rely on the evidence of the senses, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray, before attempting to feel that which they deny. Whenever you are in the state of mind, I should like to, but I cannot, the harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. You never attract that which you want, but always attract that which you are conscious of being. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. So one of man's problem is that we take the outside for real, and then we can't stop reacting to it. And then we come upon these mystical truths, and we try to test out our imagination. But often we meet with mixed results, sometimes failures in important areas, sometimes even in simple matters. And then we react to this. But we are being taught here to be successful. We must move from what our senses show, especially when it denies the feeling of our wish fulfilled. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. Most people have been brought up to believe that prayer is praying to a God outside of us. But Neville is teaching you that prayer is the art of assuming that you already are what you want to be, that you already have what you want to have. Prayer is the art of yielding to the wish and not the forcing of the wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself. Prayer must be without effort. But how does one reach this natural state? Through imagination. But how does one imagine without effort? There's a sweet spot just before sleep, where dreams start to come, but you're still conscious. It's that state that you can start to intentionally imagine things and they easily start to appear as dream images. And finally, Neville goes on about this to say, to yield successfully to the wish of an accomplished fact, you must create a passive state, a kind of reverie or meditative reflection similar to the feeling which precedes sleep. In such a relaxed state, the mind is turned from the objective world and easily senses the reality of a subjective state. So take what Neville is teaching here, and every night when you go to bed, just before you drop off to sleep, ask yourself what you want. And then ask yourself how would it feel if you had what you wanted, and that feeling, sleep in it. And this concludes commentary from Neville Goddard's Feeling is the Secret.